Hi and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Tuesday the 4th of April 2023. So yesterday ugly data and oil shock, stagflation, threat sparks, bond and gold gains. Banks and the dollar dumped. Value outperformed growth uh, by the most in over five months. Uh, crude climbs after OPEC cuts, yields and dollar dip on month end Angover. Yeah, I mean this OPEC thing, I had a look at this uh, yesterday. Uh, I think there's one point uh, six million barrels per day that's going to be cut from may that's really going to uh, see uh, fuel prices move higher again and also add to inflation uh, u.s uh, stocks were choppy amid higher oil prices and soft uh, ism data economic news uh, for today we just got the jolts uh, job opening that's uh, due out at uh, 3 p.m uh, 10.49 million as opposed to 10.82 previous we'll see what happens ADP later in the week and then we get into uh, non-farm but we are into the Easter holidays and speaking of which I think probably going to see the markets continue to the upside given this as people wind down for the uh, celebrations at the weekend but let's have a look at uh, yesterday see what happened kick off with the Dow work our way through to the metals and uh, see where the markets are uh, were yesterday and uh, overnight. So once again in the Dow, uh, this uh, moving to the upside yesterday to the 33577 level that uh, I spoke of yesterday, right to it, it's sitting there on the overnight as well. Let's just have a look at uh, the average uh, move over the last uh, few weeks uh, to the upside, starting really with March the 27th. Well, in fact, we go back to the 24th because that's when the uh, we saw Deutsche Bank being bailed out and the Dow's moved up uh, just under 2,000 points, 143 per day there for uh, the Dow. And uh, yesterday, again, you can see uh, the market moving to the upside. There's the high and also uh, the market trading at that uh, 35700 level, which is uh, there at the moment. But yesterday, again, just sailing to the upside. Uh, you can see the whole session there and again we had uh, a 379 uh, point move for yesterday massive move again in the Dow so continuing to move to the upside like I say I've got to come back to the daily and have a look at this um, see where we're going next and we've got to uh, this uh, point here and here so I would go from the main swing here from top to bottom and you can see that we're through the uh, 62 and 78 and then 89 on the upside there before we get in the attempt to get back to the high that we've got to the left there at 34,513. Like I say, there's nothing around to stop the market from moving to the upside at the moment. The banking crisis is in abatement at the moment. It's been sorted for the time being. Even the crude oil thing with the Russia, Saudi Arabia, Iran, etc., it's you know again it's not stopping the market from uh, moving to the upside and in fact it would be bullish for it because there's more profits to be made it hence uh, its relationship to the stock market of moving prices higher so yeah that's why you're seeing uh, the markets on the high still and you just need to take out yesterday's high which is uh, quite achievable in one bar in the Dow a 50 point move as you can see uh, yesterday when we had the news how quickly uh, prices can drive through these resistance areas so yesterday's implied volatility starting to make for very interesting reading down at 14.58. So we're getting back into those lows, aren't we? So let's just have a look at a six month chart where we've seen uh, this before when it gets down to the lows into that 14 area. We start to see uh, corrections. We've got that there. Uh, we didn't actually get down as low as uh, 15 there. And the same here when we had the, the big correction back to October. So the market moving up, but uh, the implied moving to the downside. So again, the lower this goes, the bigger the correction will be. If we'll look at the 12 month chart, you'll see what I mean. We did actually get down to 11 back in uh, September of 21. Uh, and then we saw the, again the corrections. But if you look at all of these peaks and where we get into the lows, you'll see the corrections uh, follow when you get down into these sort of uh, low levels. So again, um, we're, we're heading there as uh, we can see from uh, the chart at the moment starting to get very interesting indeed but I expect this to go up slightly lower as the market moves higher over the uh, next week 
and then uh, from Tuesday of next week, once we've got the Easter Bank holiday out of the way, we may see uh, a different uh, thing altogether. And in the German DAX, uh, yesterday you can see trading down to the five bar, moving average in the daily, then bouncing off this uh, overnight. We still need to get through that 15,700, which is giving the market a bit of grief at the moment. In the 30-minute chart, uh, you can see that uh, we moved to the upside. We then retraced 89% and then we moved down uh, late in the afternoon, uh, 5 p.m. there. We saw a bit of a shakeout and then the market uh, recapturing this uh, before the end of the Dow trading session. Got a gap there. We've already filled it, so we're free to move to the upside now as uh, yesterday's high is there in the crosshairs at 15,000, uh, I think it's six, uh, 659. Like I say, really, the, the one you, you should be looking at is uh, this one here, the uh, 700 uh, level. That's the one they're going to be gunning for if they can get through the high convincingly. But yesterday, very, very bland and boring for the uh, German DAX, uh, as can be seen here in the five-minute chart. Never really got going in the morning. It was really choppy. Then it broke out, then it came back, and you know you can see it how how choppy it was. Apart from the the one shakeout that we had around uh, 5 p.m., and then we just moved the way back to the upside there. And overnight, the market's above the DP in the five-minute chart there. Well, it'll be above it, all of them, um, but uh, the 200 MA also playing a part in the five-minute chart as well, but stuck in a sideways range. Like I say, Easter isn't helping. It helps the, the longs uh, for sure because nobody will want to sell going into Easter and causing carnage uh, for the Easter weekend celebrations. Trading for yesterday, 14946, uh, 1929. Only had the uh, um, one loss, that's why. And the win loss uh, profit trade, 6633 uh, there. Uh, there were only three trades, so that's why you've got two thirds winners uh, for ES today. So yeah, it was a good it was a good morning. I just had to let the trades uh, um, just roll, move the stop to break even, and just sit through a lot of the uh, the nonsense in a bigger time frame. So yeah, it was uh, worth doing. And also uh, the, before the market opened, because I have another screen to the left of me, and whilst recording the alert, also uh, did a, a trade on that as well. So caught the short position when the market dropped uh, in the pre market session as well. In the S&P 500, this trading up to the 89% area. We got through the 78 on Friday and then Monday we got through, uh, well, we traded through it and then came back and then we used it as support yesterday to get through to the upside again. There's your 30-minute chart uh, started moving up and it just, it trended up, but it was painful. Then you've got the ISM data and then uh, the close where the market's finding a bit of support, but it needs to get through the high in order to move to the upside there. In the FTSE 100, also continuing to move to the upside, 7.673. There's your upside targets that we discussed yesterday. Uh, still bullish, and we're up. Um, what are we? Let's just have a look from that same 20, 24th. Uh, include, let's include the overnight. 731 points now in the uh, FTSE there. And in the 30-minute charts, uh, there you can see, yes, they're choppy, but to the upside, still got that trend uh, in place there to the upside. GBP, JPY, uh, down yesterday, but uh, rebounding, finding support, getting back above the five bar moving average, remaining green. And then you've got the 78.89 in place there. The 30-minute uh, uh, GBP, JPY, you can see there the market trading down to the low of Friday and then making its way to the upside. Double retracement all the way back down to the close, important level before moving back off and now stuck at uh, the high there where it's found resistance, so no surprise. In the pound, also big bar for yesterday and then back down uh, on the overnight. Let's just have a look at this. You can see there we kicked off uh, straight away. Uh, not at any sort of major support there at all. It was uh, in no man's land between uh, the S1 and the S2. However, the buying came in and uh, then we struggled a bit at the low and close. And that's why you uh, need to see the big bars to drive through these areas. Then we see absorption of the sell orders at the 200 MA and then continue to move to the upside there. Big move yesterday for... Uh, uh, the pound for sure, uh, well over uh, nearly 150 points there for the pound. 
And in the dollar index, or the Dixie as it's known, uh, down yesterday, having made its move to the upside in the pre-market session, trying to bounce a bit uh, on the overnight there. So in the metals, uh, struggling a bit uh, overnight, a volatile day yesterday for the silver market, but managing to come back to that 24 level uh, through it, as uh, can be seen there, but it's still not holding above this level. And overnight now it's being pushed to the downside as the dollar moves to the upside. So a good effort again, but just failing to hold at uh, that 24. Go back to the daily chart, you'll see uh, the number of times it's been to this level over the last few days, but uh, they're not letting it uh, stay above the $24. So watch out for the 200 MA and the low and the S1 on the downside if the market does come back. And also watch out for uh, Friday's low as well. Meanwhile, in gold, uh, this uh, looking a bit stronger sideways uh, the yesterday, but to the upside to the top part of the channel that you can see there, we've got a bit of a sideways move going on and then down on the overnight with the dollar. And there you can see a lovely move up there yesterday, nice and clean and uh, clear, unlike silver, which is a bit more choppy. Finding support at the 50 EMA at the moment. If it breaks this, watch for support at the DP level. And on the upside, you've got to take the close out and the high to continue moving in the daily chart back to uh, the 78 and 89 levels there. And in the gold silver ratio, this moving back to the upside, which you'd expect as uh, the market uh, consolidates and silver gets uh, pushed to the downside uh, a bit more there. Okay, that will do it for this one. Uh, let's see what happens today. Like I say, it's just, I wouldn't be surprised if it stays fairly quiet until Friday's uh, NFP numbers, and they could just be a non-event as well, given that it's going to be a bank holiday in the UK and uh, Europe as well. Okay, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.